Before I get started with my formal remarks, did everybody notice in the uh, program where it says remembrances? Coach, isn't that for dead guys? <laughs> uh, uh, thank you all for being here this evening to help uh, celebrate Coach's induction into the Hall of Fame. I'm Buzz Garlock, and along with me, Kevin Riley, one of the uh, best shooters ever to wear the purple high tops and, and the, uh, the matching purple short shorts. They were so cute. <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin and I are really honored to have been asked to represent all of the athletes that are here tonight. I know all of you guys would like to speak and give Coach a hard time, but we were asked to do it. We are honored to be able to help honor Coach this evening. Um, I'd like you guys to do me a favor right now, if you would, please. And I want you to close your eyes. Please do that. Close your eyes for me. And I'd like you to uh, uh, take a trip back in time. Close your eyes. Take a trip back in time to 1972. And this is not a Timothy Leary acid trip. This is just a time traveling trip back to 1972. At that time, I want you to think about what the Bellevue College campus was. Okay, if you, if you think about it back then, uh, the campus included the gymnasium. It included the building just to the south of here where all the classrooms were, along with the uh, administration offices. There was a small Quonset hut for the art students, and there was a student center. And the student center at that time consisted of a pinball machine, a pool table, a foosball table, and there's a lot of cigarette smoke coming out of it. <laughs> and I, I know some of you guys are too young to even remember back to 72, or maybe weren't even born in 1972, but I can assure you there were no dinosaurs at that time, but there were a long, long haired freaky creatures with colored bell bottoms all the time, and that was, that's, that was the remembrance I have of that. Um, the student center, double wide trailer, and uh, it was rumored that there was a library at that time, but none of the athletes could substantiate that. <laughs> there were no dorms, there was no Greek system, so there's no fraternities, no sororities, but I can assure you that the fraternities that we had through the teams and later on the sororities with the girls' programs were every bit as strong, the brotherly love and sisterly love was every bit as strong as any fraternity or sorority across the country. Okay? The gymnasium, let's get back to that for one second. As you walked in the door in 1972, it was an ugly, slippery tile floor. There was no three-point line at that particular time, but the peach baskets had been replaced with regular basketball baskets. There was a men's locker room with something close to a training room, but embarrassingly, at that time, there was no women's locker rooms because there was no women's sports. We've come a long time since then. Uh, if you think about it, what Coach had to recruit to in 1972 was not very much. And then as you open up your eyes and come back in time from 1972 to where we are today, Look at the uh, pennants that we have up here, and, and you see what was it, 30-some championships at that time. This is the whole, this is right here, is the house that Jerry Mosser built. Okay. <laughs> but I would suggest that it's not the championships that was really important to coach, it's really the relationships. And if you look around, not at the pennants, but if you look at each other, and do, do that for a minute. Look, look at all the people that are here tonight. Th this is the community, this is the family that Gloria and Coach built. So thank you for that. <laughs> Coach stories. Uh, everybody here could go through and, and have a dozen, 20 different coach stories. And we obviously don't have time to do that. But on the, the Bellevue University Facebook, there is a place where you can go 
and I, I know some of you guys. I used, you, you said you had one. You had to do one on one with coach. They have they have to be appropriate for online stuff. But everybody's got these uh, these uh, stories. Share them with coach, and also your well wishes on the Facebook or write them a letter as a number of uh, people have. Um, on the coach stories, Kevin and I are going to go through a couple of them right now. But uh, uh, obviously, they've been told and retold and embellished along the way. But uh, the one thing that I can tell you that, that's a common thread among these stories is that, that whenever they're, they're told, the, the guys always say and the gals say, well, the story's true, but that must have been somebody else. <laughs> okay, Kevin, are you, uh, Kevin's going to do the first coach story, I do believe. We had humble beginnings. <laughs> we still have humble beginnings. I want to take a moment uh, to go back to those humble beginnings. I want to introduce a few of those players from the first few years coach was here, because it kind of all ties together for us. Buzz ranked first all time in assists in this college university. The most unselfish, team-oriented player that I had the honor to play with, and my dear friend. Ed Larson. Ed yeah, Kevin, keep talking about me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only lie so much. Uh, Eddie, in my opinion, no, just stand there. <laughs> I don't think there's a better shooter that ever played at this university than Ed Larson. Eddie scored over 1,600 points in his career here. And I don't know how he fell off the uh, all-time leading scorers list. Uh, just one day he was gone for some reason. <laughs> but I'm getting to that, Ed. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and Mr. Lahotak, that wasn't your fault that all of a sudden Eddie's points aren't on there anymore. It's your predecessors. <laughs> Terry Cadwell. Terry was the best athlete on our team and probably the sharpest tongue. <laughs> Mark Rachel. He didn't want to st stand up. It's not that hard. Mark was the smartest basketball player. He was. Pat Paul. A good outside shooter, a good rebounder, couldn't jump a leg. <laughs> I'm trying to be honest. Larry Kypus, the ultimate teammate. Bob Drake, great leaper. Every time he took that fade away, turn around, jump shot, coach said a bad word. Every <laughs> time. Raleigh Yost. Where's Raleigh? Lieutenant Raleigh Oath, Sarpy County Sheriff's Office. Smart player, most physical player, good baseball pitcher. Ken Rieschel, the team humorous. <laughs> we met Coach in the spring of 1972 at Coach Marty Dwine's house for a cookout. Buzz described us well. We had on those baggy linen shirts, bell bottoms, platform soles, and a lot of bad hair. <laughs> After Coach met us on the way home in the car, he turned to Gloria and said, Dear, we may have made a poor career decision. <laughs> I 
The first week of practice as we got into the October of that year, Ed Larson got thrown out of practice from off and off. You guys can sit down now. <laughs> And for the guys that came in and gals that came in later years, we apologize for having the stories from the beginnings, but you all have your stories and we really want you to share them on Facebook, okay? But uh, one story I'd like to tell is uh, the very first basketball game that we played was at Milford Technical College. And, and by halftime, we had a bad start. Surprise, surprise. By halftime, when we went in, Coach broke the chalkboard with his fist. <laughs> but, but that's not the real memory. The, the, the memory that I, that I really like is that uh, Mike Crasher, one of, his, one of the ball players at the time, uh, was a reserve. And in the second half, because we were getting beat, Coach said, Crasher get in the game. He goes, no, Coach. And, and Coach thought he was being belligerent and didn't want to go in the game. He says, Crasher get in the game. He goes, no, Coach. And one more time, he says, Crasher got to get in the game. He says, Coach, I left my game shorts back home. All I have is my jock. <laughs> now, on that schedule, along with Milford Tech that first year, you need to appreciate this, that other basketball powerhouses included Grace Bible and Parsons, which became next year called the Maharishi Institute. <laughs> that, that game, Ed Larson missed the bus. Larry Kipe has scored 30 points all in bank shots. <laughs> the next week at practice, Eddie got thrown in, out again for mouth and all. Back to me. Metro State, Denver, Colorado. Uh, this, they weren't very good at the time, but now they're a, a D2 uh, powerhouse. Uh, Kevin and I were dribbling, Kevin was dribbling the ball down the court, I was right side by side with him, undefended, at half court we're deciding which play to run. At that particular time, as it was for the first 20 years of coaches coaching, the only play we ran was something called a shuffle cut. So there's, there's no reason to have a conversation. <laughs> Kevin dribbles the ball off my foot and out of bounds. Kevin, this is where you take over. Huh? That's because he ran right by me. <laughs> From that time on, every time Coach said my name or Buzz's name, he made reference to the divine. <laughs> I became known as Jesus Christ. <laughs> and you were? God damn it, Buzz. <laughs> Lord, Buzz and I are not using your name in vain. We're just repeating what that man said. <laughs> Near the end of January, same season, team was thrown out of practice because Ed Larson mouthed off. <laughs> you guys notice the pattern here? I asked Coach last week, Coach, how many times did you throw Eddie out of practice? 